The Muca 892BT is on the very limited list of pro diagnostic scan tools that support all system scanning, a decent amount of special functions, bi-directional testing, ECU coding, AI supported diagnostics and yet comes with lifetime free updates. I put this tool to the test and found a couple of things you should be aware of just in case you're in the market for a scanner or you've been considering this particular tool. Now let's get this. For full disclosure, I received this as a free review sample from Muka, but it was just the device and they had no input on the making of the video. Unboxing the device and we have a nice compact carry case which contains the following quick start guide and packing list, RJ45 networking cable, I'll be showing how to use this in a bit. The tool is next but let's set it aside for now. You also get the F chassis cable that's used for connecting to some BMWs so that you can do some some advanced calibrations, type A to type C cable for charging, the charging brick and some power adapters for wall sockets in the US, EU and UK, an RJ45 to USB cable again for making a network connection to the tool and lastly the device itself. And in case you haven't noticed, Muka is a sub brand of ThinkCar and this tool has a solid build and exactly the carbon copy of the ThinkScan 689BT with the exception of some some enhancements which I'll cover in a bit. At the top of the device you have the type C charging port, USB type A port for making a wired connection to the tool or connecting accessories and the power button. On the rear you have the VCI held in place by a magnet. This is actually quite satisfying to detach and to dock. You also have a kickstand and finally a speaker. Here's everything you get in the box and I have the specs listed on the screen. Feel free to pause the video if you want to go in into all the details but just to say that the display is 8 inch and it supports all the recent diagnostic protocols including the diagnosis over internet protocol and this is exactly how to set up that diagnosis over internet protocol connection. The RJ45 to USB cable connects to the scanner and then to the blue RJ45 cable itself that plugs into one leg of the F chassis cable with the VCI going into the other leg and finally this end plugs into the OBD2 port. Let's connect the VCI to my 2017 Honda Accord. Powering up the device and we have the central interface. Using the top menu and going from the right to the left, the more tab contains a number of functions and I'll just select the grid view. Online service is just customer care. I have to say that I got a response within a minute of typing a query. Coverage list is for finding out what's supported across the different brands of cars and through this gadget icon you can get access to some apps including Gmail and YouTube. It also features an offline code library and you can go ahead to get more details on the code from Google or just use the AI assistant. I checked out the AI diagnostic report for technical accuracy for this P0420 code and it made sense but more on the AI integration later. Finally you have the module icon from where you can access all the additional accessories from Muka ranging from TPMS tools to battery testing tools and so on. Upgrade is where you download all your free lifetime updates from. The maintenance tab is also known as the service functions and there are a total of 34. Switching to the grid format, I like the fact that these functions are arranged in alphabetical order and as I always say, everything here is not going to work on every single car because not every manufacturer has built in a service function for testing some of these systems. Using this odometer reset as an example, it supports a small range of car brands and so it's always good to consult the coverage list. I was able to initiate the ABS bleeding procedure on this Honda without any problems. I'll leave a link to the online coverage tool in the description down below just so you can check out what works on your car and what doesn't. And finally we end up in the diagnostic tab. Starting from the Muka AI function, for the simple stuff I started with a query on why I have a check engine light after cleaning my MAF sensor 
sensor and the tool hit all the common potential issues from using the wrong solvent to reconnection issues. I then moved on to a slightly more challenging question given the scenario of a car that is running rich in which the MAF sensor has been cleaned, spark plugs replaced, exhaust leaks ruled out and there are no codes. Again the response from the assistant was quite logical. He suggested that there could be a problem in the injectors. I then followed up by saying that I've already run an injector cleaner in the car and whether I thought the injectors could still be the problem and he correctly identified that partial clogging, internal wear or failure could still be one of the reasons why the injectors should still be looked at. The integration of AI into this tool is one of the differences between the ThinkScan 689BT and you can go ahead to set the AI assistant to be a floating icon for easy reference from any of the screens that you're working from. That said, I did find an area where the AI fell short and I'll cover that in a bit. Dollarfix is another addition to the 892BT. This is largely a community where you can ask and post questions and learn automotive stuff even though I have to say it's still developing so don't expect to find answers to every query you may have. Feedback is just as the name implies, sharing recommendations with the manufacturer, reports and history are for assessing previous scans, OBD is for making a generic connection to the car through OBD2 protocols, diagnosis is for manually selecting your car while auto search is for automatically detecting the VIN. The tool identifies the VIN and I go ahead to finalize the selection of this car. I usually start with doing an all system scan which the team completed in 2 minutes 4 seconds. It also correctly identified all the 10 modules on this car. These are the parallel codes that I got from the last time that I checked the engine compression on this car. If you know anything about the ABS and the EPS systems, even after the codes are gone, you typically need to reset those ECMs to finally clear those codes from the memory. As you can see, there's no check engine light on the dash. I went into system selection and to the ECM. Live data has over 200 PIDs and you're able to combine and graph a maximum of 4 PIDs at any time. This is a bi-directional scanner and I was able to actuate the radiator fans on this car without any problems. I was also able to actuate the AC compressor clutch, the fuel pump as well as run tests for the transmission solenoids under the transmission control module. Since this tool also supports ECU coding, I then moved over to a Toyota RAV4. I was able to configure several ECUs on the car, for example altering the settings for day running lights and those annoying door open or seat belt chimes. Now having spent time with this tool, here are a couple things that I don't like. The first thing is that depending on where you're coming from, this scanner can come across as slow, I would liken its speed to an Autel device and you'd most definitely notice the lag if you're coming from X tool devices. I honestly think that some of these animations may be adding to the issue. I also think that Muka can cut off some of these dialogue boxes which I don't consider important. Another thing I don't like is that under the updates tab you can't find a description for the pending updates. This is usually good so that you know what you're downloading. Third is that for the manufacturer DTCs that I found earlier on this car, the tool had no offline description for those but you're rather forced to either go to Google or to consult the AI. Some other scanners would have at least a rudimentary description of the code. Furthermore, this was somewhere that the AI fell short because he kept on suggesting that the 83-11 code was for washing machines. This isn't really a big deal. At the end of the day, I think we all know that you don't take AI results hook, line and sinker. Most of us usually consult the internet while researching DTCs anyway. I do think that if the AI assistant was built on a small language model for the automotive industry, this issue probably wouldn't have arisen and I know that it was built on a large language model because I also asked it questions on how to fish or how to get married and for sure it had an opinion on those. Still on the AI, I did find one instance where the assistant responded in Chinese but I just repeated the query and got a good response. Now the truth is that I don't consider any of these deal breakers but see if they are for you. All system scanning, bi-directional testing, ECU coding, a decent amount of special functions don't usually go together with lifetime free updates yet the 892BT gives you all these without ever needing to pay for a subscription. The AI integration is also another plus even though 
whether that's something that you can easily search for on your phone but this will be good for people who love all-in-one solutions one other strength i noticed on this scanner is that i was able to access the seat weight sensor initialization function for this honda this is something that i used to have on my hotels but they ended up being removed and i also haven't found this function supported on the x2 devices that i have and that's the thing about scan tools no one scanner will do it all you just need to consider what functions are priority for you as well as your budget in all i find this a well-rounded pro tool for either a diy or a shop i'll leave links and coupons down below just in case you want to check it out don't forget to like share and subscribe if you've loved this and i'll catch you on the next one peace